What's going on everybody and welcome back to my channel. Uh, we're gonna try something new today guys. We're gonna try a Mountain Blade Warband. It's kind of a RTS uh, Age of Empires meets Elder Scrolls ish kind of game. So uh, and it's one of my favorites of all time. I would have to say guys I just love this game. Uh, been playing it for about a year now and I would say out of the last 10 years it's just one of the best games that's came out on uh, PC and uh, now console finally so we'll be doing this on the Xbox one sorry about the uh, the picture guys it may be a little zoomed in uh, the format uh, I couldn't figure out how to get it uh, completely adjusted but uh, we'll get on with it anyway so let's get a game started so you guys can see what this game is all about um, so basically we, okay, so welcome adventurer to Mountain Blade Warband. Before beginning the game, you must create your character and remember. So basically we're going to go into a uh, character creation. There's going to be like a little backstory. Um, if it's your first time with Mountain Blade Warband, I would recommend definitely going male. And uh, the reason for that being is in this game, in this particular time, um, you have your nobles, your kings, your knights, and, uh, women are kind of frowned upon, unfortunately, in this time, for bearing arms and, uh, taking up arms and being in wars and everything. So, anyway, uh, we want, let's see, you were born years ago, land far away, your father was, uh, we're gonna go with an Im impoverished noble, I think I said that, imp impoverished, blah, blah, blah. anyway, we're gonna go with that. It's going to put us, it's going to give us uh, kind of a, a royalty lineage, uh, which is going to make things a lot easier. We're going to go with a page uh, at a nobleman's court. We'll go with a university student. And uh, last but not least, uh, why are we ultimately setting out? So basically after school... We decide that we want to set out on our own for adventure, and uh, this is our backstory, basically. And uh, the reason for that being is, let's see, we've got uh, personal revenge, uh, the loss of a loved one, wanderlust, so basically you just pirating, what have you, adventurer, uh, being forced out of your home, lust for money and power. I would say uh, my recommendation for your first time through would be lust for money and power, or um, Wonderless. We're going to go with Wonderless. And okay, so we become an adventurer and we ride off to our, our destiny. So, so we get, uh, now since we picked um, a noble heritage, guys, uh, we get to pick a banner. It's the only way you can pick a banner at the beginning of the game. You will eventually get one if you choose, like, say, a blacksmith or something. Um, but anywho, I'm, I'm, let's see. I'm not sure exactly what banner. Kind of want it to be like maybe a couple of horses, couple of, yeah, maybe this. Maybe this one right here, actually. We're going to go with that one. Okay, so now we must name ourselves. And uh, let's see, we'll go with the times too. And uh, we'll go with... We'll go with Lord. Oh, space it. We'll go with, uh, well, my name's Mark, but, uh, sure. Go with Lord Mark. Why not? All right, and uh, we get an initial set of attribute points, guys, and skill points, and uh, weapon uh, proficiencies. And uh, how this works is after each level up, we'll only receive one attribute point after this initial uh, setup of our character. So what we want to focus on is I want to get my strength, agility, and charisma up to basically 10. And then just start focusing on intelligence. Reason for that being, guys, is when you put an attribute point into your intelligence versus the other three categories... You get two skill points per round, and you'll see what I mean as we uh, progress through the game here. So let's just kind of get it on. So we want to get close to... Yeah, so we're at 10 with Charisma now. We'll get Strength closer to 10. 
And now we have seven uh, skill points. And we're going to go Iron Flesh 1. It's going to strengthen our defense. So when we're hit and struck by uh, swords and what have you, arrows. Uh, we're already Power Strike 2. So I think we'll focus the points on other things for the moment. We'll, we'll definitely go one point in shields. Uh, what that does is it uh, reduces 8% per skill level. So of the damage your shield takes... Which your shield will break uh, at some point if it te it keeps taking damage. So uh, let's see, athletics makes you run faster. Personally, it's a personal effect; it affects nothing else. And uh, let's see, we already have no horse archery, no looting yet. Let's let's put a point in looting. It's the beginning of the game. We'll also put a point in training, and we'll we'll explain the training parts or the trainer part. Um, pretty soon for you guys I will let's see we have one path finding I'm just kind of scanning over sorry guys we're gonna go with three in leadership and we'll put the last one in trade I generally always go with just some badass uh, with a lot of strength and uh, a nice big sword or what have you and just go straight up smashing uh, the enemy uh, you can choose to focus your your points into archery or maybe some throwing device like a javelin and uh, pole arms are popular in this game um, but I like to just put it all into one hand two hand and maybe crossbow and uh, strengthen those up um, also using the weapon in the game raises your proficiency so you, it's kinda like free weapon points but we're just gonna put it all into one and two for right now Alright, so now there is a bit of character design involved in it. I'm just going to get something close to what I think I might like. So I'm not too concerned with the look. We're going to be wearing armor and everything a lot, so... Let's see... Kind of maybe dark hair, maybe. We want a beard. Maybe something like that. Hair. Kind of shortish, maybe. Wow, well, there's just. There we go. Uh, go with a spiked hair. Yeah, sure. That that works. All right. Let's see. Age. Age is fine. Hair color. I think, yeah, I mean, it's good the way it is. And then I just want to maybe get his... Here, leave that alone. There we go. Get his skin a little... Well, so I'm thinking the faction I'm going to go with, guys. Uh, there's five factions it's compressed of the game is. It's kind of like Risk in a way, too. You know, you just have your different countries that are kind of going at war with each other, taking each other's land and, you know, giving it back and this, that, and the other. So, let's see. Okay, so we've crafted all that now. It's just going to kind of go into an explanation. You guys can totally read this if you want to. Just pause it and you can read it. But uh, I'm just going to kind of summarize what it's uh, explaining. Is um, So we set out on our own and now we must pick our faction that we want to kind of get dropped off in. And uh, basically that would be the area that we're going to focus on um, our personal interest to gain prestige so uh we want to join a caravan to Provin, kingdom of swadia or revidan uh the kingdom of the vigors or tolga the kirgi kiates sargoth with the nords chakala with the rodox or shariz with sarin and sultanates so i think for our first playthrough i would say i would recommend going with swadians swadia uh, reason for that, guys, is they have their top tier military uh, battalions that will be under your command are uh, Swadian Knights, they're cavalry, and they are badass guys. They will tear through the enemy lines and just engulf them. I mean, they make things a world easier, but uh, with this being an experienced playthrough with me, 
I think I'm gonna go with the Nords because I really don't care for the the Kyrgyz, if I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Kyrgyz, or the Serenids too much. I don't care for them too much. The Rodox, yeah, are really good archers. Nords are great groundmen. The Kyrgyz and the Serenids are more like this horse archery based type of deal. Uh, the Vigors are more like a Nords ground troop deal. And then you have the Swadians with just an extreme cavalry. So once again, I'm going to go with the Nords just so we can get the ball rolling here, guys. And uh, we're going to go into a little bit of... So uh, you are exhausted by the time you find an inn in Sargoth and fall asleep quickly. However, you awake before dawn and are eager to explore your surroundings. You venture out onto the streets, which are still deserted. All of a sudden, you hear a uh, sound that's, that stands the hairs on the back of your neck. Uh, you rasp your blade sliding from it, fri sliding from its scabbard. All right. And it just kind of goes into a cutscene here, guys. I know what's going to happen. Dude's going to charge me. Well, after he's done shooting his arrows at me. And uh, try to kill me. And we're just going to finish him off first. And now you would think, you know, like, oh crap, here comes another one. But it's actually a merchant, and he has this to say to us. Uh, are you all right? Well, I guess you are alive at any rate. I'm not sure that we can uh, say the same for the other fellow. Uh, uh, that's uh, one less thief to trouble the streets at night. Although heaven knows he won't be at, at he won't be at the last. Anyway, maybe you can help me with something. Let let me talk more inside out here. We don't know who's listening okay so this guy's got <clears throat> kind of some propositions for us some business inquiries i guess uh the merchant takes you in, into his house once inside he stands at the door for a while checking the street and then finally convinced you uh, convinced you have not been followed comes near to speak right looks more like going to him to speak but Okay, now let me explain my proposition. We've always had brigades in the hills driven to banditry by war, debt, or love of violence. Uh, recently, however, they've been getting bolder, leaving their camps in the wild and venturing into town, looking for any unwary prey. Uh, Watch Commander tells us it's because of all the fighting and the frontiers. Fewer men to keep an eye on the streets. Well, makes sense. Uh, but I'm not sure what to uh, make of it. It seems that the most logical explanation is that the bandits have an ally inside the walls who helps them enter unnoticed and helps them identify particularly tempting targets. Last week, you see, they took my brother. Oh, okay, so a kidnapping. And that's basically what he's going to go into explanation with, guys, is... Uh, he's going to tell us that his brother's been kidnapped, and uh, this is where you need to find the bandits. But first, he wants us to go gather at least five men. So we're going to say we're interested. We're going to take the job. And uh, what our objective is now... Yeah, you have been taken on your first quest. Yay! First quest. We're, we're so big now. Alright, so we're just totally going to leave this whole building. And this is kind of what the world map looks like, guys. Um... So you have, so you have the, the, the big capitalized names are capitals, uh, and then you have the, the secondary buildings are castles, and then you have these little towns. Uh, and how it works is there's five, five factions, five kings, and underneath each king, has, uh, they have many lords that they, uh, basically generals that they command around, um, and go to war with their their bordering uh, ally slash enemies to take territory and gain you know more power and property thus thus far you know it's uh, just one big map of war at points so you have the Swadians in red here guys you've got the Nords uh, which is us up here in the blue you've got the Vigors over here in the white the purple is the uh, Kyrgyz, and you have the Serenids, and the Rodox over here in the uh, southwest. So our main targets probably will be um, 
the Swadians here, because they border us, and the Vigors will probably be the two that we clash with the most, probably at the first couple parts of the game for a little while until we get on our feet and, and all that. Another reason why I picked the Nords faction, guys, is because right in here near Rivichag uh, is, in a little while... A bandit, uh, a bandit hut or cave or landing is going to form there. And they form all across the maps, like in the different regions and everything. And there's different kinds of bandits. You have like desert bandits, forest bandits, mountain bandits. And these particular ones are called sea raiders. And I think they're the toughest out of them all. And we're going to use them to kind of gain experience and, and to beef, our, beef ourselves up a little bit, level up through experience and everything. And then we'll be ready to kind of take on doing some jobs for, for a king and becoming maybe a lord and um, taking on actual other military armies with uh, opposing lords. So that will be our main points of interest. For now, though, guys, we're just going to kind of stretch our legs. We're going to go to these couple towns here. And we're going to gather the men that he wants us to gather. We need at least five. <laughs> And then we're going to return back to him, report that we have the men. So it said I could recruit some, but nobody wanted to uh, join me there, so nobody wanted to join Lord Mark's uh, battalion. So we'll go over here to Hain and we'll check Hain out and see if they will uh, throw us a bone. At the beginning of the game, guys, you really, so we got seven, bam, just right there like that. We're gonna go over here and and uh, grab some at Helbegi real quick. See if we can get double digits. Um, so the beginning of the game is pretty sketchy, guys. Like uh, you'll have bandits and stuff wanting to chase you around every five seconds because you're too small to be a threat to them, and you're not in a faction really serving under a faction, so you don't have to worry about lords yet. You just ha kind of have to worry about bandits. <laughs> There are such thing called as another, it's another sort of rebel in the games. And they, these are like neutral rebels, like the bandits. They'll just attack anybody, farmers, anybody in, in travel. So yeah, they denied. So we're going to have to scoot way over here to Fanata. So we're grabbing us some Nord recruits. So when we go to these towns, it asks us if we want to recruit. That's that's what's happening. Is basically we're accepting their their form of a military, which is more or less just farmers from these little towns. And it's our job under our, their under our wing to train them into soldiers. And that's kind of what happens as you travel along, fight, and uh, this, that, and the other. So we have enough men now. We'll head back to Sargath, the capital here. We'll talk with the uh, the merchant there. Well, there's a feast already. All right, so I'll explain all of that later too, guys. A lot of ground to cover, guys. Like, a lot to... Ooh, no, I don't want to... I didn't mean to do that, really. They kind of get uh, a little antsy, especially if you pull your weapons out. So I didn't want to... I think I needed to go to the tavern, correct? Let me collect five men. So these are your notes and everything. You can hit select. Uh, I'm not sure what it is on PC, guys. but uh, And it will pull up all of your little uh, pages here, which is game log, recent messages, notes, game concepts, characters, locations, and the factions. So actually, I'm just going to show you guys this real quick. So if we go to factions, there are five factions. Read them off before. These are them right here. We can go into each individual one. We'll go to the Nords. And it kind of shows you all of the territories. Who's in charge? King Ragnar. These are all of his territories that he allows lords to kind of steward over and protect. These are his lords under his command. And this kind of uh, gives them a, uh, or gives you some notification of who they're at war with and who they're at peace with. So right now, as of, we are already at war with the Vigors, or I guess I should say the Nords are already at war with the Vigors because we're not involved with the Nords yet. We just 
birthed into this game, so it's going to take a little while for us to get uh, vassal ship or lordship underneath the king. We'll have to earn his respect, and uh, through that is we'll gain renown, uh, which is basically another word for popularity, and um, he'll eventually throw us a bone or two. So I thought the merchant was supposed to be here, so let me just hop out of here real quick in yeah because we needed to collect the five men all right merchant of sargoth wants you to collect at least five men from nearby villages after you collect these men and speak with him he is in the tavern at sargoth yeah he must have been upstairs then okay all the taverns have an upstairs um may not be much but they do have one so that's not him there's a book merchant We'll cover all that once again, guys, in the uh, future. It's kind of something we don't need to concern ourselves with right now. And there he is. Okay. Got your five guys, buddy. Very well. I shall hunt your bandit. Bandits down and recover your brother. All right. So we can just be or escape right out of that. Once again, just to leave that. And their bandit lair should be near here. And then we can... Matter of fact, let's check our notes once again. Learn where the hostages are held. How do I do that? Alright, find and defeat a group of bandits lurking near Sargoth and learn... Okay, so, alright. So we need to beat up some bandits near... Uh, oh, and there they are. All right, I've been looking for you. Tell me what. Tell me where you keep your prisoners, and I'll let you go. Ha! The prisoners are. The prisoners are only going free if you pay their ransom. Did you bring any silver? No, but I brought some steel. Ha 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 ha! All right, so it's our thirteen rookie troops after their four guys, and this is kind of how the battle uh, situation works, guys. I'm going to command my troops to actually hold position here. We only have infantry right now, and uh, basically it's just uh, what twelve farmers with pitchforks. So, so as we can see guys uh, across the field there so there's just like uh, different spawn battlefields uh, depending on the terrain that you're in at the time when you go into battle with somebody and it's kind of like one of those old school Final Fantasy RPG type of uh, things when you're going into battle on the world map you just run into your enemy and next thing you know you're getting options for battle so I'm gonna have my men charge now that they're close enough and you just can kind of see how the command system works on this. You know, you can pull your little command bar up here. You can even pull it up this way too if you like. I kind of like using this side. But we're just going to have our men uh, work on these four guys. Maybe we'll, you know, we'll get a swipe in here. I, I guess I can handle this guy while they're handling the rest all right we shared okay good job boys and that was our first uh, battle in the mountain blade warband so it just uh, we increase our numbers and everything is how it works guys we can recruit more men under our command at some point uh, uh, spare me spare my life blah 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 let me go let me go it's whining in a little bit so Mission accomplished. We found out where the bandits are. And uh, so they drop loot, guys. And I, at the beginning of the game, when you're first starting out, you just want to take everything. Even these two stones, I mean, you would think, you know, why is he taking the stones? It's just a stone. It's only worth a dollar if we resell it. Well, it's a dollar we don't have. And if uh, you notice down in our bottom right corner, we only have $160, or dinars as they call them in this game. And that's not a whole lot. And um, any man that you have under your command, I have 13, you have to pay. You pay them at the uh, end of every week to be under your service to kind of fight for you. So it gets expensive at some point so there's ways around that guys but uh, I think what 
that's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to end this episode right here. I'm going to end this one. So if this is something you like to see, if you'd like to see more, give me some feedback, guys. Uh, like I said, it's one of my all-time favorite games. I did plan on doing like a couple parts, possibly, just so anybody who's viewing my channel, they can just check the game out if they like and uh, see a little bit of what it's about. And uh, we'll, we'll see how long it goes, how many parts I do. But uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next time... We'll see you later.